So we're doing something new that I haven't done in previous weeks. We normally do an offensive film session and a defensive film session. Offense kind of bothered me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But defense was super fun. So, you know, we had the W. So, I mean, later on, we could talk about how the offense needs to be fixed and things like that. Um, but I'm just going to give you another film session on defense and how great they were. Last video was about the end game, our defensive ends and pass rush packages with those dudes. But I think we did a lot more great things on defense. We saw some, you know, Trey Diggs things. You know, we saw some, you know, you know some some new D linemen we've been waiting to look at. J. Ron Curse is incredible. Um, let's just kind of start here, right? I think the first thing that kind of popped off since the very first drive was, hey, man, Leighton Vanderish got active. Hey, well, welcome back to the party, son. Um, in my initial scouting report on Leighton Vanderish, I was like, uh, he's cool. I wasn't like super duper impressed with him, but when he gets to run free, he's really good. And, and then he went out and had a, a top tier season. People thought that I was wrong and I was hating on, on Leighton Vanderish. I you know, I ain't patting me on the back at all, but uh, Leighton Vanderish had a hell of a game last Sunday, and I just kind of watched the plays that Leighton Vanderish made. He's right here. Let's see if anybody touched him. Let's just kind of run the, just kind of run the play. See if anybody. Nah, all right, cool, <laughs> good to go. And you know, you you, you would kind of wonder why that's the case. Well, I mean, you know, we got Randy here, we got D Law there, we got uh, Carlos Watkins playing some fa some fantastic football. We got you know Oso Digizur right here. So um, you know, normally we have situations where you know you know the, these guys get on Leighton Vanderish pretty quick because they trust that they're able to deal with the D line blocks. We didn't get much of that. The D line wreaked so much havoc. Leighton Vanderish was able to run free. Let me show you another example. So let's take a look at this. We have Leighton Van Der Esch on the on the field right now. We're going to take a look at this play, then we're going to come back and talk about it. There are some glaring things that's just looking us right in the face right now that's so totally different from when this thing first started. Let's just look, let's just look at Van Der Esch make this play again, and we'll come back and we'll talk about it. First thing I noticed, we got a little bit of end game, right? On the last video, we talked about end game being anytime we have three or more of our air quote defensive ends on the field. That's what I call end game. We got Dorrance here. We got D-Law here and B-Gap. Interesting. Then we got Michael Parsons right here. We know D-Law is one of our better run defending defensive ends. Tristan Hill is in B-Gap. And we have Neville Galmore lined up at the zero. Now, Neville Galmore coming out of Oklahoma, he projected to be more of a three-tech guy. And he was doing a bunch of that last year. But uh, he, he he he's had some peanut butter. Y'all see he's had some of this offseason peanut butter. He's almost doubled his size, probably put on 20 pounds. So I think he has he's one-tech, zero, sometimes three. I think that's going to be Neville's future moving forward. And why did Van Der Esch run free? Well, because D-Law and Neville are tearing up shit in front of him, right? <laughs> Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, not only that, not only are they tearing up stuff in order for Van Der Esch to run free, but let's take a look at Dorrance right here. Dorrance is a guy that could have made this play by himself if it wasn't if it wasn't for Van Der Esch. Tristan Hill, he's blowing up his block, 72. He could have made the play. Neville Galmore swims over the top. He could have made the play. D-Law busting ass on his guy. He could have made the play. This is more than just we're taking Taking up blocks for Neville Gal, I mean, pardon me, for Leighton Van Der Esch to run free. This is, we all can get some. And I think that's something that we may have been missing early in the season. No disrespect to the guys that was doing it, you know what I mean? But when your D-line is, no, man, don't worry about it. We ain't going to say names. Don't worry about it. But, you know, when the guys in front of you are playing better, then that can make Leighton Van Der Esch play better. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I can put a lot of, you know, credit on that and, and you know Layton still got to get there and and make the tackle because Keanu Neal still look funny with this D-line in front of him you know what I mean but um it's good to see Layton back on track because we're definitely going to need him let's look at another Neville Galmore play <clears throat> I saw Neville Galmore used in this um, context a bunch to where we'll have some end game stuff. We'll have our guys boom, boom, boom. And Neville would be the anchor of that. We saw on the last film session, he was playing zero and we'll have five ends around him with just him being the only, um, the only D tackle in the game. Well, this is another situation, you know, where he's the only guy, then we just got stand up ends and this is a pass rushing situation. So earlier we saw Neville just one play ago, we saw him line up at the zero, mostly doing nose things. Um, hey, put him at B gap. Put him at four I. He's lined up inside the tackle shoulder here. So put him at four I and let him get in on some of this pass rush action as well. Because Neville coming out of Oklahoma was still bursty guy. Wouldn't call him a, a Tristan Hill bursty guy, but he was still like an upfield, good feet, good speed kind of guy. So you take that size and you keep that speed. You know, we're getting some dynamic things from Brother Neville now. And, you know, Anthony Brown drops one. What nobody even buy him? He was scared. He was scared Malik was going to hit him because Malik just been hitting everybody. 
Y'all want to see another guy more again? We haven't seen him in a while. Check him out in B Gap right here. About to tear stuff up in the run game. Hey, man, look, he's going to be one of them dudes that you just can't put one guy on. Look, if you just try to latch a human on a Neville Gallimore, he's just going to take you and we're going to go together to make a play on the ball carry. That's not the only time he did that. I said, if you want to latch on to Neville, he's going to carry you all the way to the ball carrier and we're going together. We we're going we together. Number 69, we sir, sir. Look, the cartel view of this looks beautiful, but I like to go to the wide view because you actually, if you look close enough, like if you get real close to your phone, close to your tablet, close to your TV, computer screen, however you're watching this right now, if you look real close, I got to pull up the wide view here. You can see the center soul leaving his body as Neville punches him. You see, you look, you see that right there? You see, you see, oh, goodness, man. My word. You got to see it from, from the side view in order to see how impactful this was. And, you know, he... I ain't never seen nobody hurt two people on one play, but Neville did it. And here's someone asking, has anyone seen Terry McLaurin? And this is making sure that nobody hears from Terry McLaurin. Good job, Diggs. J. Ron Curse made a super impressive play right here. First of all, we're going to disguise this thing as like a uh, cover one match man kind of look, right? Like that's how it starts. But, you know, J. Ron's going to bail out and this thing's going to end up being like a like a uh, like a cover two kind of look. But let me just talk about how impressive this was from J. Ron. First of all, J. Ron didn't make the catch. And I feel like J. Ron Diggs and Micah could have came away with this interception. Taylor Heineke wanted to throw it to us so bad. Let's talk about what J. Ron Curse did, right? He bails out of here. Right, he ends up right, uh, right inside the numbers. Right, reads it in front of him. Bites has enough range and enough drive on this play to fly, and damn, then make the interception. He could have made the interception right here, but uh, but he 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 simply did not bring it in. Which is you know whatever, whatever it is, what it is. But I'm just more so impressed of how he plays from range because we talk about strong safeties typically being box guys, and we make so much of J. Ron Curse being that you know alternate linebacker kind of dude um but not only is he playing strong safety playing linebacker kind of things but he can he, he can play deep and make plays at depth and i just i just thought that was important enough to share with y'all so shouts out to j-ron then on top of J-Ron making these big rangy plays, J-Ron still brings physicality to this team. You know, when you hear the chant run, hit and talk shit, like, like that's him. That's his thing. So, you know, we got strong safeties that, that hit people. We've got free safeties that hit people, right? So if you, you know, we're just slowly building this identity of defense of somebody that, of a team that whoops ass up front. Yo, I ain't hating because it's easy for me to sound like a hater even when I'm not. But like a Washington fan asked me, have I seen Terry McLaurin? And I was just, I don't know, man. Maybe you should just check and see where, where Diggs was. And maybe that was the reason why you hadn't heard from him. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. It's just so fun watching this defense, man. D-Law getting pushed. Tristan Hill getting pressure. Michael Parsons making plays and coverage. It's just fun. It's fun to watch these guys, man. I understand the Washington football team is compromised, but I think you can do this versus any team. Because think about this, right? Like, we've been doing this versus any team. Like, like we've done this versus the the Patriots, who's the best, you know, team in the AFC right now. We've done this um, on defense versus the Chiefs. We've done this on defense. Like, we've done this before, right? I ain't just going to keep saying we've done it. But, but we, we, we've done this. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like we haven't played any offensive talent all year. Vikings like 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 pick a team and we've played great against them defensively so you know I know there's going to be some haters saying yo watch it's 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 only Washington but we've done this all year plus we're we've done it to Washington plus we're just getting more help we're going to do this against anybody we're going to do this against you know Green Bay Rams Arizona pick a team pick a team it's going to happen to you it's slowly but surely going to happen to you hey hey look hate to be you hate to be you right now and once this offense gets on track man Good luck to your player. Hey, man, I ain't want to hold y'all too long, man. I'm actually on vacation right now. I just wanted to, uh, you know, have this posted so we can keep the content rolling while I'm not around. Um, defense was fun. We're going to um, tap back in next week. We have a – who are we watching live? We're going to be watching the Giants. It's going to be a noon game on the 19th. We're going to beat their ass too. All right. I'll hold it down for the Dosky Wilson, the Peace Wilson. Man, follow me on Twitter, V-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I. Check out the outro.